Buoyancy is a critical part of boating, Nick, because when we're talking buoyancy, we mean will your boat actually stay afloat even if it's full of water. Now, nobody leaves the boat ramp expecting that that could happen to them. But in this segment, we're going to show you some of the things you can do to make sure that your boat will continue to float should the unthinkable happen. Some boats, even some older ones, already have positive flotation buoyancy. But for most people, the question of how long their boat would float, if at all, when swamped with water, is pretty much ignored. Since 2006, all new boats must have an Australian builder's plate. And that will tell the consumer whether the boat's got basic or level flotation. And of course, all the other boats out there that have been registered prior to that date, nobody really knows how much buoyancy is in there. So we think it's really important for existing boats for people to have a look at the, the buoyancy that's in those boats. And there's quite easy ways to find that out. And if you go to the MAST website, there's some formulas on there that you can work out and work out how much additional buoyancy your boat might need. For boat owners like Scott Reynolds, following the relatively simple calculations provided on the MAST website and the addition of some polyethylene foam blocks provides peace of mind while out on the water. I think it's a, it's a great safety aspect, especially for an old boat, she's 30 years old. Um, it has got good buoyancy for, for its age, but uh, the technologies have certainly come a long way and anything that can keep me on the water longer, the better. The many void spaces that currently serve no purpose can easily be transformed into buoyancy cells that will keep the boat floating, buying invaluable time should disaster strike. The big advantage of your boat floating is that you can get to the safety gear, you can get to your flares, you can get to your radio, you can get to other items of safety gear. If your boat floats, you're an easier target for the authorities to find and it gives you something to hang on to. And also with Tasmania's cold water, obviously it's, it's far better if you're in a boat that's floating as opposed to wandering around in the water or swimming around without a boat there. In the unlikely event that I will be turned upside down, it's nice to know that there is something that, that may prolong the boat floating, um, so as I can, I can then sit on top of the boat rather than in the water for the four hours that it might take for somebody to come and actually rescue me. There are a number of foam buoyancy options for retrofitting boats, but polyethylene sheet is widely available and simple to work with and calculate. From our formula, which we can see on the MAST website, we know that this boat needs about 0.522 cubic metres of buoyancy. At the moment, under the floor, we've got about 0.32, or thereabouts, metres, cubic metres of buoyancy. So, the additional amount needed is what's in this half sheet of foam here. This is all we need to give this boat adequate buoyancy. All that's required is a few simple tools, a tube of sticker flex and the time and the inclination. This material is really easy to work with. I know the space I need in the, in the transom of the boat. I simply mark it out on here and that's where we cut. You don't have to be a Scott Cam to do this or a builder. Just simply cut it like this. And we've got the exact piece we need. In a lot of these boats, there are places, all sorts of little nooks and crannies where you can put this, this flotation. In this sort of boat here, we've got a big void space back here. I've already got some foam in there, but I've cut this space especially to fit, and that will go around the bilge hose down here. So I'll just place this in now. Okay. That goes in now, it covers up that space. It's an area that wasn't used, and I've now used it for additional buoyancy in this particular boat. And right through the transom here, there are areas like this where you can put bits and pieces of foam, even little pieces like that. It all adds up at the end of the day, and your boat should be pretty good for buoyancy. Even boats built after 2006 aren't required by law to have level flotation buoyancy. So even if your boat is shiny and new, it will still pay to do the buoyancy sums. We've spoken today about retrofitting older boats. Of course, if you're having a boat built, you should be looking at having the buoyancy built in it during that process. With this boat here, they've used polyurethane foam. It's an expanding foam, and the boat's been built around with this foam already in it. You'll see right down the side of the boat, the full length has got buoyancy in both sides. 50% of the buoyancy in this boat is down aft, and up off the floor. So if this boat filled up with water, you'd find it would float. 
All the information you need to do the buoyancy numbers on your family's boat are available here on the MAST website or drop into any service Tasmania outlet for a detailed brochure on the subject. Remember, once you're in the water, it's too late to ask.